Yay! Yay! Okay, let's start static equilibrium um, by trying to do something very simple. Uh, let's just look at what happens if we try to support a board um, at the two ends. So I've got some board. Um, let's say it's 12 meters long. Uh, its mass, uh, gravity acts at the center of mass, center of gravity, and it's pulling down with a force of 200 newtons. So what is that? It's like, um, I don't know, 50 pound board, something like that. Um, and all I want to do is just support it. Maybe it's two people that are holding it up, uh, F1 and F2. So how, uh, what, uh, what are the forces involved? How strongly do you have to, or what force do you need to apply at F1 and F2? Um, to support this board. And we're going to support it in what we call a static equilibrium. Static equilibrium means two things. It implies two things. It means that the sum of all the forces are zero. This says something about the center of mass, right? This means that the center of mass is not going to accelerate. Um, that's kind of what we did, you know, some of some all the forces set them equal to zero is what we said uh, for something that's, you know, moving at a constant velocity, which could be zero, um, you know, way back uh, a whole bunch of units ago. So we're going to incorporate that. So we're saying that the center of mass is not going to move, but there's one more condition, right? Because even if the center of mass does not move, what could happen is that this whole thing could rotate around the center of mass, right? That's possible. Um, so if this thing were spinning around the center of mass, it would still be true that the center of mass isn't moving. Um, so we need another condition. The other condition for static equilibrium is not only is the center of mass not accelerating, but it has to also be true that the sum of all the torques around any point is going to have to be zero. Okay. So this means no spin. So the first condition, so static equilibrium always implies those two things. Some of the forces are zero, which says something about the center of mass. It's not accelerating. And the sum of the torques have to be zero. So that's saying something about the spin about the center of mass. That has to be zero. So if that's the case, which is what you want if you're building a bridge or something, right? You don't want the bridge to accelerate, nor do you want it to spin. So both of those things uh, usually are going to be enforced. Okay, well, just looking at this little problem, you might think, oh, this is super easy. I'm doing, I'm, I'm going to do it in my head. F1 and F2 are both going to be 100, and then we're done, right? Okay, that's true. Um, but we're going to do it using this formalism. We'll get that answer, but then we'll expand that and do a couple of interesting cases that maybe aren't so obvious. Okay, so let's do the obvious case just to make sure everything works. Okay, the sum of the force is equal to zero. Okay, just looking at this thing, uh, what is this telling me? The sum of the force is equal to zero. Okay, well, I have F1 and F2 acting up. So I got F1 plus F2, and then I got a minus 200 equals zero, everything in newtons. So what this tells me is that F1 plus F2 is equal to 200 newtons. Okay, notice it doesn't tell me what F1 and F2 are. It's just that they have to sum to be 200. Um, I mean, you can sort of look at it and you sort of know that they're going to be 100 each, right? Um, but let's not, the, the, the math is not saying that that has to be the case. So let's, let's see if we can show that that's the case. So all we know is their sum is 200. Let's look at this other condition. The sum of the torques is equal to zero. Okay, um, remember when you take a torque, you have to say about what point. So let's do the sum of the torques about the left end. If they equal zero, let's see what that implies. Okay, um, I could take the torques about any point, but the reason why I want to do it around the left is because, remember, the torque is the force times the distance away, right? So that F1 is zero distance away from the left end, so I, I don't even have to consider it, right? I'm knocking one term out, uh, which is just going to make things a little bit easier. Um, I'll go ahead and write it down, but you, you don't actually have to. So 
the sum of the torques. What's the first torque? The F1 torque. The it's going to be R. It's it's always R cross F, right? R F sine theta. Um, the R and the the R and the F, the angle between them is going to be 90. Sine, th sine of 90 is 1, so I don't even have to worry about that. So it's just R times F. So that's just going to be 0 times F1. I really didn't need to write it down, but I did anyway. Um, okay, and then I got 200 pointed down. Now, the shortcut is, this is something we did before, 200 is pointing down, right? That's trying to make the bar rotate clockwise about the left hand point so here's my left hand point it's trying to make the bar rotate clockwise that's a negative torque right so that's what i'm gonna do you could go through and figure out what the cross product actually is and you'll get a negative but the short hand the shortcut way to do it is just to say okay that force is trying to make this thing spin clockwise clockwise rotations are negative so i'm going to give it a negative uh, let's see, it's that's operating at 6 meters away times 200. Cool. And then F2 by itself is trying to make the thing spin counterclockwise. That's positive. So F2 plus, um, this is 12 units away. So there I go. Okay, so there's three possible torques. Uh, I sum them all together. And now I can solve for F2. So 12 F2 is 1,200. So this tells me that F2 is 100 Newtons. And now, now I can go back to this equation I had before. So if F2 is 100, then that tells me that F1 definitely is 100. So F1 sure is 100, something that we knew by I to begin with, right? So this makes total sense. So we used the formalism and got the obvious answer. Okay, no big deal. Um, okay, let's try something new. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take F2 and I'm going to move it right here. I'm going to move it in by three meters. If I move F2 in, let's see what happens. Look at the force diagram. Just looking at them in terms of forces, I still have two forces going up, one force going down. And so this equation, oops, my force equation up here, this is always going to be true. This is still true. F1 plus F2 is 200. That's what that force diagram is telling me. But let's look and see what the torque is telling us. It'll tell us something interesting. Okay, um, so let me, uh, just because I'm working on something new, let me put a little line in here. Okay, so now I'm once again going to sum the torques about the left to be equal to zero. Okay, so I'm not going to write down zero times F1 anymore because um, we'll just keep doing that. Uh, okay, so I'm going to have my minus 6 times 200. That's still there. and now. Uh, that F2 is 9 units away, right? So now I'm going to have a plus 9 F2 equals 0. So now 9 F2 is 1,200. And so now F2 is 133 newtons. And so look what that means for F1. That means that F1, uh, looking back up at our force equation, right? If they sum to be 200, that means that F1 has to be 67. That's kind of interesting. So as I move F2 in, if that's a person, right, as the person walks in towards the center, um, they have to shoulder more of the load, um, and F1 is getting a little bit easier time of it, right? So F2, the, 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 the force on F2 increases, the force on F1 um, decreases, force of F1 decreases. Okay, cool. Uh, let's do it again. Let's keep getting more practice. Um, now, let's move this thing right. Oops. Let's move this thing right here. I mean that it's right at the center of mass. 
you kind of maybe know what's going to happen now. If I keep moving it towards the left, what's going to happen is F2 is going to get bigger and F1 is going to get smaller. If F2 is right at the center of mass, let's see what that means. Maybe you already know what it means. Um, so again, the sum of the torques about the left equals zero. So this means I still got my minus six times 200. Now F2 is six units away. It's at the center of mass. So this implies my F2 is 200 newtons. Cool. And since they summed to 200, that means that F1 is zero. Well, that's really interesting, but it's also kind of what you expect, right? If, if you were going to carry this board all by yourself, where would you carry it? You'd carry it in the middle at the center of mass. Um, so F2 in this case really is doing all the work. F2 is carrying the whole load of 200 newtons. F1 isn't doing anything because if you were just going to carry a board all by yourself, that's where you would carry it. You'd carry it right there in the center. So that makes total sense. All right, uh, let's try one more because this one is kind of cool. Um, let's take F2 and we're going to move F2 right in here. Now it's going to happen. This is kind of interesting. Uh, so once again, take the torques around the left. So some of the torques about the left equals zero. Uh, okay, so again, F1, I don't get anything. I still have my minus six times 200. Okay, now look, uh, F2 is three units away. So I got my three F2 equals zero. So what does that mean? That means F2 is 400 newtons. So F2 is sort of carrying more than they should, right? 400 newtons. Um, but the forces still add to 200. How could that possibly be? Well, it must be that F1 is minus 200. Well, that's really interesting. I mean, that is sort of what has to happen. If you're both carrying... Uh, the plank of wood on the same side, then what happens is F2 is carrying twice as much weight and F1 is actually the going the other way around. F1 actually has to push down that way in order to keep the thing steady, in order to keep the thing from spinning. Um, so that's that's kind of interesting. Um, Oh, that kind of makes sense. What if F2 was uh, some sort of a support right there, right? So if you put a beam on that support, what the beam is doing is it's trying to rotate around that support. So in order to keep it steady, this end wants to come up, right? So in order to keep that end down, you have to push down on that end um, in order to keep the board steady. So that if you kind of try to make a movie of it in your head, um, that might actually make uh, that might actually make some sense. But anyway, the point is um, that just by moving these forces around, you get some maybe kind of interesting behavior. So we started with an obvious case. Um, and then by moving this around, we got things that are kind, kind of interesting. Um, and, and this is of a lot of use in engineering because, I mean, it matters if you're trying to figure out what kind of couplings you need at these joints. Uh, it would really help to know, like over here at this thing, which direction is that force going to be? Do you need something that's going to be compressed, some sort of compression joint? or something where the force is going to be going the other way, right? Or the, where you're going to need like a chain or something, or a, so, uh, something under tension. So it completely changes the kind of architecture uh, if you're building something like this. Um, so just some cool, maybe uh, non-obvious behavior from adding all these torques together.